Good evening to all. I am Lian Christopher. I'm about to deliver an excerpt from the eulogy on Princess Diana, the Princess of Wales. It was originally delivered by her brother, the Earl of Spencer, on September 9, 2007. This speech depicts the very essence of Diana's charitable heart. I stand before you today, the representative of a family in grief, in a country in mourning, before a world in shock. We are all united, not only in our desire to pay our respects for Diana, but in the need to do so. For such was her extraordinary appeal that the tens of millions of people looking at this service via the television and radio felt that they too lost someone close to them in the early hours of Sunday morning. It is a more remarkable tribute to Diana than I can ever hope to offer her today. All over the world, Diana was a symbol of selfless humanity, a standard bearer for the rights of the downtrodden, a very British girl who transcended nationality, who was classless and needed no royal title to develop her own special brand of magic. Today is our chance to say thank you for the way it brightened our lives, even though God gave you but half a life. We all feel cheated always, that you were taken from us so young, yet we must learn to feel grateful that you came at all. Only now you are gone, do we truly appreciate what we are without. And life without you would be very, very difficult. We have all despaired over our loss for the past week, and only the strength of the message you gave us gives us the strength to move forward. There is an attempt to rush, to canonize your memory. There is no need to do so. You stand tall enough as a human being of unique qualities and do not need to be seen as a saint. Indeed, to, to sanctify your memory would be to miss out on the very core of your being, your wonderfully mischievous sense of humor with a laugh that bent you double. Your joyful life transmitted in your smile and the sparkle in your unforgettable eyes. But your greatest gift was your intuition, and it was a gift that you used wisely. This is what underpinned all your other wonderful attributes. Diana explained to me once that it was her innermost feelings of suffering that made it possible for her to connect with her society of the downtrodden, of the rejected. And here we come to another truth about her. For all the status, the glamour, the applause, Diana remained throughout a very insecure person at heart, almost childlike, in her desire to do good for others so that she could release herself from the deep feelings of unworthiness of which her eating disorders were merely a symptom. The world sends this part of her character and they cherished her vulnerability. The last time I saw Diana was on her birthday in London when typically she was not out enjoying herself with friends and family but rather, she was the guest of honor at a fundraising. She sparkled, of course. But I would rather cherish the days I spent with her in March when she came to visit me and my family at her home in South Africa. These are the days I will always treasure. It is a tribute to her level-headedness and strength that despite the most bizarre life after her childhood, she remained intact, true to herself. I don't think she ever understood why her genuinely good intentions were sneered at by the media. Why there appeared to be a permanent quest on their behalf to tarnish her reputation. It is baffling. My own and only explanation is this, that genuine goodness is threatening to those at the other end of the moral spectrum. 
It is a point to remember that all of all the ironies about Diana, perhaps the greatest was this, that the girl given the name of the ancient goddess of hunting was in the end the most hunted person of the modern age. She would want us today to pledge ourselves to her beloved boys, William and Harry, to save them from a similar fate of what she went through. And I do this here, Diana, on your behalf. I know that you would have expected nothing more from all of us here. And I would like to end by thanking God for the small mercies he has shown us in this dreadful time for taking Diana from us so beautiful at the most cherished moment of her life, but at least she had joy in her life at that point in time. Above all, we give thanks for the life of a woman I am proud to, be called my, to call my sister, the unique, the complex, the extraordinary Diana, whose beauty and internal will never be extinguished from our minds. I thank you.